Greetings and welcome to Creature Feature, the show where it's Halloween all year long. I'm Dr. Gang Green and it's my pleasure tonight to present to you viewers a special treat for the first time ever on broadcast television. We present the network premiere of the independent classic, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Filmed in 2002, this movie was based on the famous Robert Louis Stevenson novel, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, it was written, produced, and directed by Mark Redfield, who also stars in this movie. Now, Mark plays Dr. Jekyll and does a fantastic job of it. Fool, has the uh, crate arrived safely? Yes, sir, and delivered to the laboratory as instructed. This is a private matter, and I beg of you, let it and yourself sleep and plays Mr. Hyde with a maniacal glee that shines on film. Now this movie was made in the hometown of Mark, which is Baltimore, Maryland, and has a big budget feel despite its independent status. Jekyll and Hyde is one of the most filmed stories of all time with over 50 different versions having been shot. the earliest dating all the way back to 1908. Now the best known version was shot in 1931 and stars Frederick March. That's the same year, by the way, that Frankenstein and Dracula were made. Jekyll and Hyde tells the story of man's dualities of nature and one scientist's quest to release the dark side of those dualities through an experimental potion that he's developed. So now, without further ado, we present to you the independent feature film from 2002, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> More than 100 years ago, Robert Louis Stevenson wrote a story about a man whose experiments with the human soul have since become legend. The tale is still told with horror the world over. It is the strange case of...
Chico, está buscando el que tú montes con estos ojos ahora. It's Mr. Parker, actually. James Parker. You've come from Charing Cross Hospital. Mm, I've been expecting you. Dr. Lanyon recommended me. Yeah, no. See, they're putting in the electric lights. Yes. Change is something of a dirty word around here. <laughs> and Dr. Lanyon told me that I'd be working under the celebrated Dr. Henry Jekyll. Well, speak of the devil. <laughs> ah. I see you have met the eminent Dr. Jekyll. How do you do, Dr. Lanyon? Lanyon, I believe this is the first time in ten years you've set foot into the free ward. What's wrong? Run out of bedpans upstairs? Yeah, very amusing, Jekyll. The house governor's on his way down. It appears that some of the patients upstairs have been made unduly nervous. What was that horrid explosion earlier? The sound of progress, Lanyon. But, but Jekyll, the surgeries are directly above you. Yeah. Give this to the house governor. What is it? 300 pounds. Perhaps the house governor would like to improve his office. <clears throat> I might suggest he talk to my man, Batelli. He uses only the finest Italian model. <laughs> oh, by the by, there are two gentlemen upstairs waiting to see you. They have a very large box. Ah, fool. Has the uh, crate arrived safely? Yes, sir. And delivered to the laboratory is instructed. <laughs> Excellent, fool. Excellent. Sir, a message from Mr. Utterson, sir. He would like to call upon you at half past the hour. Will that be all right, sir? Yes, I'll be in the laboratory. Come fetch me. Uh, Dr. Jekyll, sir. Cook should like to know, uh, will we be seeing anything of Mr. Hyde this weekend, sir? No. Um, Hyde's gone away for a time. To the continent, on holiday. I'll let you know should he return. Very good, sir. to speak to you for some time about this what's that <laughs> my dear Gabriel losing sleep because of my will you know I never approved of it so you have told me I've been learning something of this Edward Hyde I thought that was a matter we had agreed to drop. What I heard was abominable. I will make no change in my will. But I will add one little word that I'm sure you will take in good part. This is a private matter, and I beg of you, let it and yourself sleep. Then I'll be off, my friend. See you at the crew house.
Mr. Little. I thought I made it clear that you will never, never see me here. My, my. Agitated, are we? All dressed up, are we? Night at the theater, is it? Here. I thought you'd want these as soon as possible, while they're still fresh. Are you insane to bring these here? I do not like thee, Dr. Fell. The reason why, I cannot tell. But this I know, and know full well. I do not like thee, Dr. Fell. <laughs> My mum taught me that. Do you know how difficult it is to obtain fresh livers and kidneys? I can't go to just any butcher, you know. Shut up. Take your money and get out. Here. Yeah. I'll go when I've had me say. And if you want Cobby and me to keep supplying you with various and sundry female innards, you'll hear me say it. My price has just gone up. Creature Feature. Tonight we're watching Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 2002. I've got a special treat for you viewers now. Up next we're going to have an interview with the writer, director, and star of tonight's movie, Mark Redfield. Pull him up on the view screen here. Hello Mark, how you doing and uh, exactly where are you? Hi Doc, it's good to see you. Um, here in Baltimore at Westminster Hall, this is uh, the church in the burial place of Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, just in case you or your viewers have never visited before. I just wanted to show you where Edgar Allan Poe was buried. And uh, actually, right here, this uh, grave marker, this is where Poe was originally buried. Um, they, uh, they moved his body later on and they uh, built a larger monument. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. The reason I wanted to uh, meet you here is because I wanted to let you know that in January of 2009, all kinds of events are going to be happening here in Baltimore because it marks the anniversary it's Poe's 200th birthday. And they've planned all kinds of great things all year long, but starting in January, John Astin is going to be doing his Poe show. And you, you might know John Astin, of course, from uh, uh, the Adams family. He played uh, Gomez Adams. I'll be directing a uh, live version, a uh, masked and puppets uh, version of uh, Hop Frog. And there's all kinds of stuff going to happen all year long. But, um, well, let me, let me show you Westminster Hall and uh, the Poe Monument. Now, we're in the middle of watching Jekyll and Hyde right now, and I have to tell you, your portrayal of Hyde is among the best I've ever well, seen. Thanks for that. I'm, I'm glad. I hope you're all enjoying Jekyll and Hyde. So what were some of the challenges that you encountered while making Poe? Tell us a little bit about the background techniques that you used. We shot Jekyll and Hyde here in Baltimore, and uh, some of it was locations and some of it was sets. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Westminster Hall, this church and cathedral, is actually built over a cemetery. There's all kinds of stories back in the day about body snatching and this kind of thing. And they actually built the church over the cemetery. Maybe I can come back in January, take you on a tour of the inside. But uh, for Jekyll and Hyde, there's a crypt scene. We were going to use this as a location, but the, the ceilings were a little too short, so we built a set. Uh, some of the other locations we did use are in the Baltimore area. There was an abandoned insane asylum. We used that as Jekyll's hospital. Uh, the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore, beautiful museum. That's, that's the big uh, Italian Renaissance type architecture. We use that for the Carew House and that kind of thing. Everything else was shot on sets. So what are some of the other movies that you've made? We did a film called The Death of Poe. Uh, 
that it's about Edgar Allan Poe's last week on Earth, and might have some fans out there who might know our film Chainsaw Sally. I know there's some Chainsaw Sally fans out there. Poe's monument's right up here. What are some of the future movies that Redfield Arts will be making? Well, we've got some other great films coming up that we're going into production with in 2009. Keeping with the Edgar Allan Poe theme, we're going to be doing The Telltale Heart. And we're setting that during the American Civil War. It uh, promises to be very, very drippy with Southern Gothic horror. And we got a nice cast lined up for it. Ingrid Pitt from uh, Hammer Horror Films, uh, Robert Quarry, who was Count Yorga Vampire, two wonderful actors I can't wait to work with, Debbie Rochon and uh, Jennifer Rouse are uh, round out our cast. And uh, then, being a mad scientist, you might be interested to know that we're going to be doing uh, a little picture called The Madness of Frankenstein. Now, this isn't a remake, so don't get alarmed. It's not a remake or reimagining or anything like that. This is a sequel to Mary Shelley's novel. We figured out a way to be able to keep Victor and the creature alive, and uh, we call the story The Madness of Frankenstein, so uh, I think you'll like it, Doc. I would love to see what you can do with a Frankenstein movie. Definitely keep us posted about that one. This is uh, the monument. This is actually where Poe is buried. And if you notice, there are people, they still put black uh, flowers and they put red roses here. You might notice that they still put coins here, and the reason for that tradition is that when <coughs> Poe was uh, buried in the back, he really didn't have a grave marker. So school children got together, and they raised uh, the money to build this monument <coughs> penny by penny. So it becomes this tradition to leave a little bit of money here for Edgar Allan Poe. Well, we want to thank you again, Mark, for taking some time to chat with us from Edgar Allan Poe's graveside. Uh, go ahead and tell my viewers a little bit about where they can find out more about Redfield Arts and the movies you'll be making. If you want to uh, stay in touch with us and find out what we're doing, visit the website, redfieldarts.com. And if you're interested in our other films, well, you can find them at amazon.com or find video stores everywhere. Anyway, thanks, Doc, and uh, hope to see you again during Poe's uh, birthday bash in 2009. So thanks again, Mark. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Alberta, has there been any word from Henry? No, miss. Nothing from Dr. Jekyll. More rum! Rum here! The call for rum went up across the land. Mother's milk for me friend, Cobb here. Hey, Cobb, me young wet mole. You still crave the tea, do you? Don't let me know Jack ruin your night out. Listen to the lady, Cobb. She's defending her honor, boy, which is more than you've ever done. If it's mother's milk, you crave who's to say boo to you. <laughs> Here now, me old darling. Don't go off, man. Let's go. <laughs> Whatever happened to Cobb's eye? Jack took it. He caught Cobb watching us while we was having a bounce around the bush. Jack likes his privacy. Shut your face, Dolly. The one that's been dumb all night, you've got plenty to say now. I don't like nobody playing the crooked cross with me. Claire knows her lessons well. <laughs> Here's a posh-looking specimen. Now, dearie, time for you to earn your keep. Stand some company, friend. Yes, but not with the likes of an overstuffed scarecrow. But your friend, the dark-haired raven. Send her to my table and be quick about it. Hmm? <laughs> What's wrong, Annie? He wants Claire, he does. Friend of yours, is he, Claire? I've never seen him. 
last I've found you. I've been round most of Soho looking for you, my darling. Here you. This lady's engaged for the evening. Sitting on me arse all night won't do much for business, eh, Jack? Let's see what the gentleman has to say. You mind your tongue, Dolly. I have been an admirer for some little time. I would be flattered if you would consent to join me for a glass of champagne. You've got some bloody cheek, you dog. Dog, did you call me? And you, Jack Little. What is it? Jack Ripple. How many of your legs are made of wood? Is it just the one? How do you know me? I've never set eyes upon you before. I know you. I know your business. <laughs> Is how you impress all your lady friends. Here's your champagne, sir. You put it down and go. Now, my starling, let us drink. Let us drink to, um, us. What's wrong, my dear? Is it the, um, atmosphere? Been a while since I've had anything nicer than gin. Mm. <laughs> Who are you? An admirer, no longer from afar. And now drink, my darling, Miss Key. You know my name? What's yours? Hyde, Edward Hyde. And now that we know each other... You know my name. You don't know me. Don't I, darling? Don't many men know you? In the biblical sense, I mean. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you mean, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, of course. I'm sure you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Has your understanding improved? Any more of this, and I'll understand you so well. I'll be ahead of you, mate. <laughs> to your beauty. You'll drink with me on that, won't you? Till the cockerel crows. That is, if he ain't too pissed to crow. <laughs> I shall be away for a short time. Mr. Hyde is to have complete run of the house. See to it that his every wish is seen to. I shall communicate the date of my return in due course. Jack.
choose to hide, I think. <laughs> that is my name. <sighs> what do you want? I see you're going in. I am an old friend of Dr. Jekyll's. The solicitor. Quite correct. Well, since I have met you so conveniently, I thought you might admit me. To what purpose? You will not find Jekyll. He is from home. On your side, I... Would you do me a favor? Will you let me see your face? I shall know you again. Yeah. How did you know me? By description. Description? We have common friends. Common friends? Who are they? Well, uh, Jekyll, for instance. He never told you! I do not think you would have lied! Come, my good man, that's not fitting language. Jekyll has spoken of you in the past. Yes. Of course he has. Regarding the matter of his will, as I understand his dealings with you. Now, now. Excuse me. I have urgent business to attend to. Do you know of Jekyll's wish to be married? Yes. How long have you known Henry Jekyll? Why, all my life, we uh, grew up together in a manner of speaking. Forgive me, I find it strange that Jekyll hasn't mentioned such a dear childhood friend until only recently. Strange, you say? Yes. There is a great place in my heart for Jekyll. He has been very um, generous. <laughs> my thoughts are often with him. And I shall be with him on his wedding night. My thoughts, I mean. And now, adieu, Mr. Gabriel Addison of Gaunt Street. Hey, we'll be right back with more Creature Feature, and now for the scariest part of tonight's episode, the commercials. Welcome back. Now back to more of tonight's creature feature, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. heads or hounds out of any of it. Yes, well, now I'm doubly curious. I've word that Jekyll's returned. Good work, Parker. Thank you, sir. Mordecai, Sir Danvers. A lovely party, lad. Never mind that. <laughs> Where's Jekyll? Uh, well, he's not here at the moment. Uh, just returning from holiday, really. Holiday? Ah, here he is. <laughs> Time spent refreshing the spirits, eh? Best thing for you, Jekyll? Perhaps a little too much spirit. I was, um, ill this morning. <clears throat> well, uh, Parker, we'll excuse ourselves now and uh, leave Jekyll in the carouse alone. Sir Danvers? Mordecai? I come only at Miriam's request. 
she has been speaking to father. And something of what she has said has obviously impressed him. This is not my wish. I understand you very well, Kuru. Say what is on your mind. I... Uh, we... recognize your wish to be married. Nirim has... Uh, changed her mind about you. After a great deal of anguish, I might add. Now to the point of this meeting. It is my father's wish that you suspend all of this nonsense here at the hospital and assume a small, quiet little practice befitting a doctor about to marry a Karu. These are your father's wishes. <laughs> I like you very much, young man, but you need to learn something about responsibility. Sir, when may I see her? Do you agree to these terms? I do not need to be insulted with excuses for your behavior the other night. I was a young man once, hard to believe, and I know all about sowing wild seeds. If you love my daughter, sell them quickly and do not break her heart. When may I see her? You may come to dinner soon. I'm sure that you will find that suitable. Shall we plan an August wedding then? I married Miriam's mother in August. August? <coughs> Dear August will be fine. Come, Father. I hate you, Dr. Henry Jekyll. If the old fool really... But then he is my father. I must do as he wishes. And what of your sister? She's a woman. She doesn't know what's best. Her taste in a husband has shown me that. You saw Henry? I'm afraid it is all darkness. Whatever do you mean? My sweet sister. What did he say? said. It's more what he didn't say. It's how he acted. Mordecai, I want to know everything. Dear heart, I imagine this will come as something of a blow, but I believe Jekyll is involved in another romance. spoke of an August wedding. Dear Mary, Papa was speaking of his own wedding to Mother. Poor old fellow. desires. There is another in Henry Jekyll's life. Fool one. Jewels.
shall be going away, my dear. I do not know for how long. Must promise to behave yourself while I'm away. Do you understand? We will see no one else but you. There's my sweet child. If you do, I'll kill you. What more can one say or do? You must talk to Henry, man to man. Please. To what possible end? I know that this will pain you for a time, but hearts do mend. I know that... Please, for me. Yes. Very well, tomorrow. I will do it first thing. No, tonight. It must be tonight. At this hour, it's unthinkable. Mordecai, please see Henry at home tonight. For you, my darling. Only for you. When will you come back? Don't concern yourself too much, my dear. Remember that I can watch you, see you, know you, always and everywhere. Be a good girl while I'm away. <laughs> We'll have it back on in double time, Mr. Carew. Never mind about that. Go and fetch me a cab. Oh, won't take no time at all now, sir. Don't argue with me, you idiot. Enough time for this foolishness. I'm looking for the home of Dr. Henry Jekyll. Do you know which door is his? Maaf karna main angrezi bolti nahi. Andar jaiye sardi se aap mar na jaye. Bloody hell. I don't know why I ever agreed to this idiocy. Hello, you there? I'm looking for an address. I've lost my way. And what address is that? Here, I have his card. Much obliged. Dr. Henry Jekyll. Fine fellow, they say. Yes, of course. Now, where do I go? Go! You can go straight to hell for all I care.
Welcome back to Creature Feature. Tonight we're watching Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 2002 by Mark Redfield and Redfield Arts. Now in this movie, Dr. Jekyll is working on a formula to release the dark side of man's personality. Imagine what I could do with such power at my disposal. <laughs> well, I've been taking extensive notes during the course of tonight's movie, and I think I'm close to a breakthrough. Soon I may be able to replicate this formula for myself. A bit more research, a few more notes, I may just do that. Go ahead and send you viewers back to tonight's movie now. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Has the master of the house been roused? He has, but... Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Muriel, what's happened? Mr. Utterson, Detective Inspector Huxtable Newcomen at your service, sir. Metropolitan Police, CID, sir. Criminal Investigations Department. I gave my men implicit instructions to have you found and brought here immediately. It has been a tragedy, sir. What's happened? Is it Sir Danvers? The son, Mordecai. He was found murdered this morning near Soho. Murdered? Nasty business it is, sir. Miriam, darling. She hasn't spoken since I've arrived. Not a word. Not a word. Perhaps it's time, Inspector. You told me what has happened. Henderson here found the body of Carew. He was fast on the spot, that right, Henderson? Yes, sir. A maidservant living across the lane saw the entire thing at the stroke of two, as a matter of fact. Midnight, sir. Midnight. Quite right. The witching hour. The girl said Carew appeared to be lost. Then he was approached by another man. Who? Who? Who was he? The other man. The girl couldn't tell clearly. <laughs> After all, it was two in the morning. Midnight. Uh, midnight. Henderson here saw the murder. A glimpse, anyway. Is that the way of it, Henderson? That's right, Inspector. Sort of about my height. Difficult to tell, really. The strange man and Carew exchanged words briefly. And then the man lashed out, great flame of anger, and brandishing a cane, he beat Carew to death with it. Who identified the body? She did. Alberta, attend to Miss Miriam immediately. Yes, sir. You are Jekyll's solicitor. Gentlemen of the doctor's affairs. We have the murder weapon. You will notice the inscription. To Henry Jekyll, MRCS, from his friends of the SBH. I hope to pick out that stick myself. Murder. It's an ugly business, sir. You don't think Jekyll committed this crime, do you? One can't argue with the evidence. Yes, this is Henry Jekyll's cane. But of recent, it belonged to his acquaintance, Mr. Edward Hyde. Edward? Hyde. Hedson, write this down. H-Y-D-E. And if you need a suspect, I would hope that Scotland Yard would at the very least examine all the connections to the evidence before pointing the finger. <laughs> Not pointing my... And before you heap more pain and suffering on this poor family, do you know that young woman, Miriam Carew? Mordecai Carew's sister. She is Henry Jekyll's fiancée. Oh. Well, then Dr. Jekyll was a friend of this Edward Hyde. The connections are serious, sir. Quite serious indeed, Mr. Utterson. The only serious connection here is that Hyde has Jekyll in some sort of stranglehold of power. Blackmail. Blackmail? This is murder. The bloody trail leads to one man, Edward Hyde. You must return to Jekyll's now. It's time, once and for all, to put a stop to Mr. Edward Hyde.
Both sides of me were in dead earnest, and from both sides of my intelligence I drew steadily nearer the truth, the thorough and primitive duality of man. Man is not one, but truly two, two natures. I say two because my knowledge does not pass beyond this point. Others will surpass me on the same lines. Early, even before the course of my scientific discoveries had begun to suggest the most naked possibility of such a miracle, I had learned to dwell with pleasure as a daydream on the thought of the separation of these elements. If each could be housed in separate identities, life would be relieved of all that was unbearable. The unjust might go his way, delivered from the aspirations and guilt of his upright twin, and the just could walk securely no longer exposed to disgrace and penitence by the hands of this extraneous evil. My beloved Henry, you know that I love you deeply with all of my heart. God sees this love but does not give it his blessing. I am full of pain, full of pain and sorrow, Henry. I hesitated long before I put this theory into the test of practice. I knew I risked death. For any drug that so potently controlled and shook the very fortress of identity might, by the least scruple of an overdose, utterly blot out the immaterial tabernacle which I looked to it to change. The temptation of a discovery so singular and profound at last overcame the suggestions of alarm. When we met, I was startled by the attention you paid me. Me, who beyond these walls knows nothing of the world. Although I knew of you, as our fathers were acquaintances, the first time I met you, I knew in my heart that you were the man I was to marry. My brother has never accepted you, not as one of us. Mordecai has never understood, thinks me foolish and young. Perhaps I am. But in my heart, I know that you love me as well. At least in my heart, I felt that you loved me. Had I approached my discovery in a more noble spirit, had generous or pious actions, all might have been otherwise. And from these agonies of death and birth, I had come forth an angel instead of a fiend. The drug has no discriminating action. It is neither diabolical nor divine, but it shakes the doors of the prison house of my nature. And now my brother is gone. And you? Where have you gone, Henry? Why have you left me? I am alone. I'm more alone than you will ever know or imagine. Actions are held within the hands of the man. I must accept that, as must you, with love, boundless, Miriam. I began to spy a danger that, if this were much prolonged, the balance of my nature might be permanently overthrown, the power of voluntary change be forfeited. Between these two, I now must choose. To cast my lot with Jekyll is to die to those appetites which I had long secretly indulged. To cast it with Hyde is to die to a thousand interests and aspirations, and to become despised and friendless. Oh God, what have I done? Goodbye, Henry. Forgive me, God. Sir? Are you there, sir? Henry! It's me, Artisan. If you're there, open up. There are some gentlemen here. Quite insistent they are, sir. This is Scotland Yard. Open this door at once. Dr. Jekyll, please. Henry, are you there? Are you all right? Enough of this. Out of the way, Mr. Artisan. Back off, all of you. Henry! This is your last chance. Men, open break it door. down.
It's Hyde. Stop him! Stay back! Stay back, you fool! Detective was Edward Hyde. After him! Damn it! I should have had it surrounded. Your fears are running very deep, Mr. Utterson. That this creature has also murdered my friend. This maniac, Hyde, lived here, did he? What do you know about him, Mr. Utterson? It's Hyde! He's on the roof! Let's take a look at some clips from another of Mark Redfield's movies. This is The Death of Poe. True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am. During the whole of a dull, dark, and soundless day in the autumn I was sick. When the clouds sick and hung death with feet. that long agony. That the play deep is the tragedy. Into that darkness man. peering. And its hero. And in my death. Were. See by this image, which is thine own, how utterly thou hast murdered thyself. Mr. Griswold, the beginning. You have no beginning, sir. Edgar Allan Poe is dead. He died in Baltimore the day before yesterday. This announcement will startle many, but few will be grieved by it. The poet was well known personally or by reputation in all of this country. He had readers in England and in several of the states of continental Europe, but he had few or no friends. And the regrets of his death will be suggested principally by the consideration that in him, literary art lost one of its most brilliant but erratic stars. That is the magazine that I wish to publish. This is Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to publish a magazine with him. <laughs> not with father's money, we're not. Now back to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde.
help me. You've been alone, my little bird. Alone in your cage. No cats to bother and torment you. That is well. Is everything all right, Edward? There is nothing amiss. Right as rain, everything is. What is this? What is this? Nothing. Nothing? What do you mean, nothing, you fool, you damn silly trollop? Who was here? It's a you. A, a thank you for your... Two glasses. One used. I waited, but... But! You couldn't wait for me any longer. My, 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 well... Let's not waste any more time. Shall we dance? May I have the pleasure of cutting in? <laughs> what well, the storm blew in? <laughs> the cripple! About all I'll take from you, dog. You, uh, you insist on abusing our friendship, Jack. Funny. All my dear friends usually end up dead. Ha! Impressive, to say the least. You're a gentleman, aren't you, Jack? A gentleman of the old school? Oh, look! My love has brought me a gift of a drink. A token of our love to you. Time to die, Hyde. You would deny a request from the condemned? I have no intention of meeting my maker sober, Jack. Give him a drink, Claire. It's the right thing to do. Before I put him out of my misery. Ah! There is a sliver of good wedged into your black little heart after all. Join me, Jack. Pour too, my dove. A toast on my life. Hey there, keep it still. The next drink you get is from the devil. And he won't be so gracious. <laughs> Hand it to Claire. What? You won't honor my death. <laughs> she has cherished me in life. This is only fitting. I'm not so generous. <laughs> to a long life, my dove. And to a painless death. Ha, 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 ha. 
Seems to be the trouble, Claire. Are you crying? Yes, I'm quite all right. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Hyde. What have we been discussing? <laughs> we were concerned with the effect of the liquor on you. <laughs> I was drinking. Me? I don't touch alcohol. Ah, no, it appears you don't, my friend. <laughs> ah. Wondrous properties, this drug. Drug. What have you done? Dear, dear Jack. Dear, good Jack. You helped rot this, you and your poaching. Remember the contract? Contract? A certain chemical element extracted from the livers and kidneys of the human female. Livers? As I recall, kid. That's horrible. <laughs> That's so horrible. <laughs> a nightmare. A horrible nightmare. Stealing innards from female corpses. <laughs> but I wasn't gathering them for you. They were for a scientist. Ah, a scientist! Oh, no, it was a scientist. It was a doctor. Jekyll, I regret to announce, Mr. Jack Little, that the contract is hereby terminated. You've just priced yourself out of the market! My instructions were quite explicit, my good man. You are Mr. Chang, are you not? I have said so before, my young gentleman. I am Mr. Chang. <laughs> but there is no one here, to my knowledge, called Mr. Edwards. See here, this is your establishment, is it not? Parker, my very life is in jeopardy. I can think of no one to trust at this hour but you. You must go to hospital. <laughs> Atop the cabinet in my office, you will find a brown wooden case. Bring this post haste to 17 Radcliffe. There you will find my associate, Mr. Edwards. Chang? The proprietor will take you to him. Tell no one of this that you may see me alive again. Jekyll. Hot name, Jekyll. Chang, let the boy in. You'll die of old age the way you pressure on. Just doing as he instructed, sir. You, did you bring it, the box? Come in, said the spider to the fly.
Amin. Open the box. Do exactly what I say. No more, no less. Where's Dr. Jekyll? He'll be here. Take it from here, boy. This part of the procedure must be handled with utmost delicacy. Yeah. See what you might be able to do with this. You said Dr. Jekyll would be here soon. Yes. Here to reclaim his rightful place in the world and allow me lengthy respite from it. Much to look forward to, we have. <laughs> Jekyll's bride to be. Miriam Crew? How dare you? Tell me, man of the world that you are. Have you ever had virgin pain? I've often dreamed of sweet pain. Sir, really, how can you... Or is it the boys you like? There are laws against such things, you naughty fellow. You'll need a proper doctor. Perhaps when Dr. Jekyll arrives. Always so curious about the good doctor. From the beginning, his important research, private work. We wonder why. I hope you all enjoyed tonight's movie here on Creature Feature. That was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 2002, starring, written, and directed by Mark Redfield. Now, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde made a little bit of broadcast history because this was the premiere of that movie on broadcast television. Well, you're about to see history made again. You're just in time because I have been successful in replicating the formula that Dr. Jekyll used in tonight's movie. <laughs> you know, every man has a alternate personality a hidden side of himself that stays locked away in a room deep from the light of day well this formula is the key to unlock the door to that room and release my own alternate personality with just one sip we shall see my dark side <laughs> bottoms up <coughs> <coughs> horrible that was what the heck what the oh no <laughs> either i overestimated the amount of hair of nude i used in my formula or my dark side has a decidedly funky flavor to it <laughs> maybe i've recaptured my soul <laughs> well we'll go ahead and let you viewers check out another little short film now this is called flip it's all about a boy who's picked on in school so he turns to the back pages of a comic book for the answer to his problems a you control monster while you go watch that I suddenly have an irresistible urge to listen to some Barry White. See you viewers next week. <laughs> Monique, where's my hair pick? Spotlight. Thank you.
Andrew. Look at the time. I'm coming to bed, honey. Flip. Back to bed, young man.
Arts dances secretly controlled from up to 50 feet away. Spooky effects. Only 99 cents. Spend it
Monday at 7.